All right, y'all. So I recently watched this video right here. Um, it's a U.S. official speaking on the G7 price caps on Russia and how they've been working. If you aren't familiar with the G7 um, price caps, basically what they've done in the United States, we have put sanctions on Russia so to the point where we are not um, purchasing any of their oil for the other G7 members, which are much mostly um, European uh, countries and a lot of member of NATO. Um, they've basically been, um, if they aren't completely banning Russian oil, they have been for the most part putting a $60 cap on Russian oil. So this is what, uh, and I'm gonna go deeper into it, but this is what the US official is saying about um, the G7 caps um, at $60 on Russian oil prices. How effective has the cap been? Thanks for having me, Eslinda. It's important to remember that the price cap has two goals, reducing Russia's revenue while at the same time keeping oil markets well supplied. And we're very confident that Keeping oil markets well supplied and reducing Russia's oil revenue are the two goals of the caps. As you say, nine months in implementation, the cap is working and that we're seeing Russia's revenue cut by almost half since this time last year, while oil markets have remained stable. That's the piece of this that I think some people tend to overlook when they think about the price cap. If we had let oil just trade unrestricted in the wake of Putin's barbaric invasion, he'd be earning a wartime premium on his oil sales for the very war he started. But we're getting reports suggesting that Russian exports are being sold for above the cap. I mean, mm. how do you respond to that? What are you seeing? Well, it's important to remember that the price cap applies to the G7, and there's a lot of trade that exists outside the G7 that's not bound by the cap. And that's why some of the numbers you see suggest some trade of Russian oil above the cap. But it's there's a lot of trade outside of the G7 that's not bound by that cap. We're going to get to it in just a minute. It's also important to emphasize that the price cap, we don't measure its success just by how many molecules of oil travel under the cap specifically. We view it as a market mechanism for changing the oil market's incentives and giving more bargaining power to buyers of oil across the globe, whether they're in the G7 or not. And even buyers here in Southeast Asia, who might not typically use G7 services and aren't bound by the price cap, are still getting discounted prices on their Russian oil because the mechanism's in place. My view. All right, so let's check some of the research that I found. This is basically the whitehouse.gov on their website, basically saying that they're agreeing to not um, sell oil to Russia. Yeah, this is basically um, a description of the ban. If you guys have time, go to whitehouse.gov. This is a briefing of the, um, the actual sanctions that the United States put on Russia. Let's see what's next. All right. According to Reuters, um, this is how I found out that the uh, price crap, the price cap from the G7 nations was actually placed at six dollars. You can also see that on the White House uh, website as well as G7. Um, if you look into their website and their information, you'll see the sanctions there also. But this is what I really wanted to show you guys and what I really wanted to get into. If you had a chance to check us out on the weekly rundown, uh, we did briefly go into this. But let's check this out, you guys. Let's see here. Okay, I already had it pulled up on the next one. Who is buying Russian oil? If the United States and the G7 is sanctioning, mind you, the majority of the NATO countries, North American trade area, uh, the North Atlantic, I'm sorry, trade area, um, trade agreement, NATO, the North American trade area, is banning uh, or sanctioning Russian imports. But the South Pacific areas, for the most part, are all open. So who in the South Pacific might be trading with um, with Russia? Let's see here, according to um, the BBC. It seems like it's going to Asia. It seems like India and China are both increasing the amount of oil that they're um, purchasing from Russia. It looks like in India is going from almost zero to basically to the moon. And from China, it looks like the amount that China's taking in is roughly doubling um, compared to uh, last year. So it looks like 
the oil that was once being sold to the United States and G7 countries is now being rerouted through um, the South Pacific. Getting more into the countries that are in the South Pacific and what they're planning to do and how they're responding to these sanctions, I wanted to show you guys this. India and China purchasing 80% of Russian oil in May, May of 2023. So even though the oil is, you know, being the purchase of oil is being declined, like I said, once again by the United States and G7, it looks like China and Russia and Russia are picking up steadily on their supply of Russian oil. From my understanding, a lot of um, from my understanding, a lot of um, the, the OPEC nations, the um, Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, that's what OPEC stands for. A lot of those countries have been cut in supply. So as a re as a result, the, um, the 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 price should be expected to increase because um, if you keep the if you keep the demand steady, you take the supply down. That's that's basically the law of supply and demand says that the price is going to go up, being that you have a lower supply with the same demand. Also, mind you, I said that Russian oil was supposed to be traded at a cap of sixty dollars. It looks like um, I'm looking at Euros Oil right now. Russian oil is traded. Their market is known as the Euros Oil. Um, let's see here. It's trading currently right now at seventy three dollars, which is technically far above the um, $60 range that it should be capped at. So India, Russia, as well as some other countries are now uh, purchasing oil from Russia um, at prices above that cap due to the um, the, the high supply of, on oil right now. I also want to show you guys this, other reasons that, that uh, and other reasons that um, other methods through which Russia might be tra changing their trade routes um, are going to be based off of this right here, the new BRICS organization. Of course, Russia, Brazil, India, China, South Africa, they formed the initial BRICS alliance. But recently, um, during this month, they made an agreement that as of January 1st of 2024, 20, um, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Ethiopia, Egypt, Argentina, and the um, Arab, the United Arab Emirates, the UAE, is also going to be added to the BRICS plus group of nations. Mind you, with this group of countries, Saudi Arabia and Iran are major OPEC members. Mind you guys, I said earlier, OPEC stands for the Organization of Petroleum Exporting uh, Countries. Their members, as you see right here, include Iran, Saudi Arabia, and who is the leader of OPEC? Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is the main country that's leading the OPEC nations. So with Saudi Arabia being the main country that's leading the OPEC nations, they're now a part of BRICS, which is currently, for the most part, being ran by China and Russia. Check this out. I'm trying to find an article for you guys, but I know that next week um, the uh, Russia and the OPEC nations are supposed to be coming up with a plan to prolong um, supply, to prolong supply um, that's for oil. Let's see here. I saw it earlier from my understanding they were planning to be 
to plan a cut at a rate of um a five percent. Let's see here. Uh I'm at my limit on Reuters. Definitely you guys do the research. Um sorry I didn't have it for you already pulled up. But from my understanding as of next week, Russia and OPEC are supposed to be continuing the supply cuts for oil. Um the the um the production cuts for oil. So as a as a result, that's going to put even more restrictions on the supply with demand being the same or even slightly going up right now. Um, that could pro um, cause price shortages. And as of right now, the EV market, et cetera, there's nothing really in place um, on a widespread um, basis to actually um, make up for the amount of oil that's going to be taken out of the market. So I do expect higher prices to be to come i do expect higher inflation and i'm interested to see i'm interested in seeing how this is going to affect the united states how this is going to affect jerome powell and the fed at their, at their next meeting when they're looking at um how they're going to treat interest rates being that this is going to have a direct impact on inflation um for you guys that stuck through the whole video thanks for watching um if you have any comments leave them down below if you want to want me to do more videos on OPEC, BRICS nations, et cetera, comment too down in the comments below. Um, make sure y'all check out the um, description section for the different platforms that we trade on. This is Dual Economics. I'm Mike. See you guys on the next video, and I'm out.